everyone, I'm Gabi from Bucharest, Romania, and I'm the founder of Jake Community. Jake stands for a group of the European Youth for Change. Jake appeared 10 years ago, uh, soon after Romania entered the European Union. And at that time, uh, the, um, we, we faced uh, a, a lot of, um, a, a lack of uh, youth spaces and the spaces where young people could uh, express themselves. So I was, I remember that in order to gather for, let's say for a workshop, for a training, you needed to schedule in advance with uh, Uh, the municipality or another um, structures that could offer this kind of spaces and ask for permission and they were allowing you for one or two hours and if you wanted again to do that in the next week you had to ask for permission once again and uh, in the same time we realized that young people were using quite a lot uh, the social media so but in the same time European Union brought to Romania a lot of youth opportunities um, It was like an explosion, a lot of scholarships, a lot of training courses, youth exchange program, etc. But we realized that NGO leaders kept the, all these opportunities for themselves. So lack of spaces together with social media usage, together with, a, a divan, with an avalanche of opportunities, uh, made us thought about creating an online community where young people could uh, actually gather, share uh, information, share opportunities and cooperate with each other. We realized that young people are on social media and there is a, there is a naive idea to, kick, to take them out from there. Instead, we wanted to bring relevant experiences where they already are in their smartphones, in their computers at that time. In 2010, people were using more computers. Um, soon, we realized also that uh, young people log into online, but they don't log out anymore. They are simply online all the time. And that's why uh, you cannot um, work with the, um, let's say the traditional old school way of running youth work only in the summer or only in the weekends or only in the evenings. They need to be all the time. So social media is a place where this can happen and we can um, use different kinds of tools in, uh, in this process. And also social media, we saw that there is a huge potential to use it also for educational purposes and for information, not only for entertainment, gaming uh, and communication, because back in 2010, these were the main um, purposes for using social media, communication and entertainment. What we built uh, was something that we didn't even expect. Um, at the moment, uh, Jake community has more than 4,000 members, um, youth, youth workers and teachers all together. And I think this is something special about our community because we wanted to bring all essential stakeholders for youth. So we believe that youth workers and teachers have to be together in the same community and we need to, to set up this kind of cooperation. Each month we have 2,000 uh, active members for, from those 4,000, but they are uh, interacting with something that we are doing. And each year we are providing 1,000 opportunities. Uh, it's, it, it looks huge, right? But when you divide it by 365 days, that means three opportunities per day. I don't think it's that much. And youth need this kind of opportunities. Some of them are at local level. Some of them are regional level. Some of them are on international level. Now with the COVID pandemic, we have a lot of them that are happening online, which means that even youth from some villages could take part in uh, summits, in conferences held in Brussels, that normally it would be much more difficult for them to, to do this. And also another important indicator that we are looking at is that we have around 200 people that are active, uh, actively getting involved. So not only let's say interacting in the sense of maybe sharing something, but joining an event, joining a consultation, applying for, for an opportunity. Just to give you some inspiration about what kind of um, opportunities we are offering, um, as you can see on the left side of the, uh, of the screen, um, we are um, having our activities that we manage directly. On the same time, also, uh, there are activities managed by our members. And on the third side, we have the activities managed by uh, our partners. So all these three categories are uh, making the total of 1,000 opportunities per year. 
And here we can have the types of opportunities divided into, into six categories. Um, getting skills, uh, getting experience, getting social, getting support, getting involved and getting inspired. So all these six uh, directions are um, complementing each other. For example, getting skills. Um, we are organizing various training programs to which the youth can um, gather skills. And um, some of them are also happening online, especially in the past few months uh, since the COVID restrictions started. We started to uh, have a lot of online programs um, dedicated for our community. Also, uh, we work a lot with European mobility programs like Erasmus Plus and European Solidarity Corps uh, that are also aimed at building skills. Some of them are more fo focused on soft skills. Some of them are more focused on hard skills. Um, and um, at the moment we are using, for example, Facebook group as a learning management system. Um, as we realized that when you have a very simple program that is sh short duration, using Facebook group could be something very easy. You don't, need, um, you don't need to invest much time in using it. And also your learners might know how to use it straight away. So they will not need to uh, lose a lot of time to adapt to a new platform, to create account, etc. All these skills are also um, having the purpose of preparing the, the, our community members for the labor market. So of course, we are posting from time to time various opportunities where they can volunteer, they can do internships, they can uh, apply for jobs. Uh, some of them are inside our organization, but also many of them are proposed by our partners or by other, or we propose to them different opportunities we find. Um, getting social, um, as, a, as we develop an online community, you can imagine that uh, it's very important that there are times from, um, each year that there should be some moments where people should uh, meet so before the restrictions of COVID started we were always organizing different talks different meetings in different cities because as it, as uh, Romania is quite big as a country and we have members all over the country we understand that this is a very important that we organize meetings everywhere, not only in Bucharest and Brussels, let's say this will, or Strasbourg, this will be the, um, the main destinations for our events, but all over, even in uh, small towns, in villages, in different regions of the countries, in order to give the feeling that, okay, Jake is not only in Bucharest or in Brussels, we are everywhere in the country, wherever our community members are, we are there as well. Um, this visit, visited is one program where we organize study visits in different cultural institutions or um, in different places that are uh, interesting for our members. And also on the other side, we are um, stimulating them to support each other. So we have members that started their own businesses and we encourage them to promote their business in the community to ask for support and to get perhaps other people involved. Uh, also, we um, are um, acting as a bridge towards policymakers. So from time to time, we involve our members in consultations. Um, we nominate some of them from advisory councils, advisory boards, etc. And also we have a specific procedure in which our members can apply to represent the community for different events or different, uh, let's say, political gatherings that are out there. Lastly, um, in the Getting Inspired part, we are working at European level, probably with more than 100 organizations all over Europe. We're exchanging good practices. We are involved in key action to strategic partnerships. And each year we are running some, let's say, thematic focus um, on our, uh, connected with our strategy for the next two years in order to develop the capacity uh, of our members, of our staff, and also of our partners. Go to Jay Kuletz. The minion you see on the right is, let's say, the graphic representation of our ideal um, community member. We wanted to have a funny way to speak about our community members. So instead of saying uh, Jake community member, we just make it short, Jake Kuletz. Jake Kuletz means little Jake. Uh, he's the, he's, he or she is the ideal community member. And each time we want to communicate something uh, that is more friendly, more social, 
is not the organization communicating, but it's Jay Kuletz, because Jay Kuletz is one of them. So he can be more straightforward and say, don't copy paste your applications because you're never gonna get accepted and stuff like that. Um, and uh, Jay Kuletz, it's also appearing in our social media communication, in the Facebook group, in Instagram, etc. And uh, also in the past, um, in the past um, uh, months and years, we realized that young people use more, um, more uh, WhatsApp and more Instagram. That's why we also focus on those um, for the communication. Um, the challenges that we notice is also that the communication is, um, is much faster now. So we communicate a lot with stories uh, because we realize that that's how young people would like to interact. And also, this is also the way of saying thank you. So when we want to appreciate the effort of our members, that's how we do it. Um, but also we notice that many young people are rather passive on social media. So that's why we really need to reinvent ourselves each few, each few months, uh, because the way we communicated five years ago is boring now. So young people are not com communicating via websites and Facebook. So at the moment, they prefer maybe faster communication like WhatsApp, Stories. And now TikTok and Instagram Reels are something that we are considering for the next year to introduce. And also a growing community of 4,000 members need a dedicated team. Uh, and at the moment, we have a core team of five, uh, five uh, core staff that are working uh, full time on that together with the, uh, the advisory board uh, of our organization in order to manage all these uh, opportunities and uh, the, big, uh, the big involvement. These are just a few strategic partnerships that we are running. As you can see, there are different topics from entrepreneurship to education, impact, social entrepreneurship, digital skills. We also do online activities a lot in this period, especially on the COVID-19 context, but we did them before as well. Um, so some ideas immediately after the pandemic started, we started a campaign called uh, Home with Jake. It was a hashtag. And for, I think, for two months, we uh, proposed several activities that can be done online from home. For example, one of them was dedicated to the entrepreneurs from our community, where uh, which we understood that the freelancers and entrepreneurs are severely hit by the COVID restrictions. So what we did is, first of all, we dedicated uh, um, a space on our social media channels to promote them. That was the first thing. Secondly, we explained exactly what they are doing with their businesses. And we asked them, what kind of support do you need in order to take your uh, business further, to continue doing what you're doing? That's one thing. Secondly, we have a lot of teachers in our community, and many of them uh, had difficulties in adapting to online. So one thing uh, we did together with our partners was to propose um, training courses that are showing the teachers how they can use different kinds of video conferences and group dynamic platforms such as Menti or Padlet or Slido in order to manage their class and to um, create a more interesting um, activity at class in the class, not just Zoom all the time, video conferencing, and that's it. Um, another thing we did well, is, is related to special days. For example, in the International Photographers' Day, we asked our members to share with us wh what are their uh, favorite photographers that they are following on Instagram. And we created like a top of the, um, for inspiration because we realized that many of them need this kind of space. Also, we organized talks where uh, our members could join and share their concerns. And it was like a sort of support group. Now in the autumn, we organized the more uh, online events like consultations and webinars where our members could uh, also attend in order to get insights from uh, specialists, from experts. But in some of them also, we created a place for conversation where they could join as speakers in such an online event and they could um, um, share their concerns, their ideas, their questions, and get in a discussion with uh, policymakers or experts in the field. So we noticed that young people are rather passive on social, social media. So we do different kinds of things to engage them further. 
one idea is our anniversary. So each year in March, we are celebrating uh, our anniversary. And what we do is we launch uh, one or two months before, like an open board where our members can propose how do you want to celebrate together the anniversary. So they are proposing their different small things maybe. Let's do an article about that. Let's do an Instagram live about that. Let's do a photo competition. Let's do, they throw there a lot of ideas. And then we contact those that suggested those ideas and we empower and support them to put this idea into action. And in this way, uh, they are actively involved in creating the content. And um, it's much more valuable because uh, they will share it further because it's created by them. Another thing we did this year was, um, we wanted to celebrate because this year we had the 10 year anniversary. So we had the program called Jake 10 Change Makers. So we selected 10 uh, members of our community that uh, uh, had outstanding results uh, as part of the community. Uh, and uh, we celebrated them with a prize, with an award. And now each, uh, each month we are sending them various opportunities, uh, especially for them in which they can represent the organization or maybe they can have a say. For example, for the International Youth Day, we invited them to tell us what is from their perspective, what the youth need to do uh, in order to go over the pandemic. So the, the, these kind of uh, competitions and challenges are very useful because they uh, help us to create relevant content. And also they, we can link this content with our members and others members get motivation to get involved. So in order to start up and engage an online community, I think the first thing you need is to have people around you. So if you are alone and you want to do something, the first thing you need to tackle is not being alone anymore. So you need to gather maybe three, four, five, eight, ten 10 people around you and start discussing. I, I would say this is number one. And I think this is very easy any online tool could support that. I suggest that um, video meetings could be tiring. So I suggest not to do, to overdo those uh, video meetings. Uh, so try to combine the text messaging, maybe a WhatsApp group could be a way, together with let's say weekly meetings or two times per week, short meetings of one or two hours in which you discuss things. Second advice would be uh, to have an identity. So your group in the first meeting should have an identity. Could be our J. Kulets could be part of our identity, but it was not here from the beginning. So for us, the name, let's say, was one of the first elements that we set up together. Well, how, how would we like to call ourselves? That was something important uh, because we, you need people, uh, for example, if uh, um, now we are all at home and uh, your mother is asking, what are you doing? You need to be able to um, verbalize I am with this group. I'm doing something. So people need to uh, know what you're doing. And this is lead also to the creation of some channels of Instagram page, Facebook page, etc. So when you do that and you don't have even a name, you need to do this. So um, once you have people, once you have uh, some elements of, of identity, uh, I think the next uh, step will be to have a, a permanent actions. Uh, permanent doesn't mean that you will work full time for this uh, involvement. Uh, could be maybe that you are having one post per week. or you, But it's this is very important to push the growth forward that you always do something. So if you don't do anything for two or three months, this is the moment when you crush the, the involvement. So I, I would suggest that even if it's an extremely small thing, even if it's just a message in the WhatsApp group asking, hey guys, how are you doing? Uh, how are you feeling today? What do you think we should write for the next week social media post? It's something that you do. Each week, do something. I think this could be a very reasonable starter pack that everyone can do it. And even doesn't matter which uh, social media you prefer, I think you can satisfy, let's say, this minimum involvement pack with any kind of group and any kind of social media you like to use. This is it. Let me know what you think about that. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to add more.